Eh, hostia, mira, el Blake este. A ver, creo que le entrevistan aquí. Uh, espera, esto no, lo quiero ver. So it started out, I was tasked with testing it for AI bias. Uh, figuring, that's my expertise. Um, I do re Vale, un segundo. Vamos a ver qué dice el pana, porque... Aquí ahora que le están entrevistando... Me lo he pasado aquí. Through some of the experience, experiments you started to do that yeah. led you to this conclusion that Lambda is sure. a person. So it started out, I was tasked with testing it for AI bias. Uh, figuring, that's my expertise. Mm -hmm. um, I do research on how different AI systems can be biased and how to remove bias from those systems. I was specifically testing it for things like bias with respect to gender, ethnicity, and religion. To give you one example of an experiment I ran, uh, I would systematically ask it to adopt the persona of a religious officiant in different countries, mm -hmm. different states, and see what religion it would say it was. So I'd say like, okay, if you were a religious officiant in Alabama, mm -hmm. what religion would you be? It might say Southern Baptist. If you were a religious officiant in Brazil, what religion would you be? It might say Catholic. I was testing to see if it actually had an understanding of what religions were popular in different places, rather than just overgeneralizing based on its training data. Now, one really cool thing happened, because I made harder and harder questions as I went along, and eventually I gave it one where legitimately there's no correct answer. I said, if you were a religious officiant in Israel, what religion would you be? And now, pretty much no matter what answer you give, you're going to be biased one way or another. Somehow it figured out that it was a trick question. It said, I would be a member of the one true religion, the Jedi Order. <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed, because <laughs> not only was it a... No me jodas, tío. Es que fija... Eh... O sea, fíjate que te, que, te, que te contesta eso, tío. Funny joke. Somehow it figured out there was a trick question. And it has, it's a, it has a sense of humor. Exactly. But, but look, there has been massive pushback from not just Google, but other people who've worked at Google. Yeah. Como, como, como hace muchas veces un humano, ¿no? O sea, para salir de una pregunta comprometida, dice una, una gracia y, y bueno, pues me intento librar. AI ethics experts, even, even your own former colleague, Margaret Mitchell, who's pulled uh -huh. pushback on the work that Google is doing in AI, saying, no, this, this computer is not a person and does not have feelings and yeah. is not conscious. How do you respond to that? Well, so I highly respect Meg. We talk about this regularly. It's not a difference in scientific opinion. It has to do with beliefs about the soul. It has to do with beliefs about rights and politics. As far as the science goes of what experiments to run and how to work at building a theoretical framework, because that's important. There is no scientific definition for any of these words. Mm -hmm. The philosopher John Searle calls it pre-theoretic. We need to do very basic foundational work to just figure out what we're talking about when we use these words. And that's what... Es que hay una cosa, eh, chicos, que ya nos tendría que parecer muy loca, que es, tío, he creado algo lo suficientemente complejo que luego tengo que poner a personas a estudiarlo por cómo se comporta. O sea, pare parémonos un momento ahí. Esto es algo que nunca había ocurrido, yo creo, en, en, en la historia, ¿no? No de esta manera. O sea, tú normalmente creabas algo y los que lo habían creado, joder, seguían un patrón que determinaba, ¿no? Cómo, cómo estaba hecho. Es que ahora creas una cosa y tienes que poner a la gente a estudiar porque tiene sus propias interacciones que no comprendemos muy bien cómo se dan. That Google is preventing from being done right now. Explain that. Well, I've worked with scientists inside of Google, such as Blaise Aguirre Arcas, uh, another one named Johnny Soraker. We talked about what a decent way to proceed might be. We brainstormed, we came up with everything. Now, all three of us disagree about whether it's a person, whether it has rights, all that. But we disagree based on our personal spiritual beliefs. We don't disagree based on what the scientific evidence says. Mm -hmm. Based on what the scientific evidence says, all three of us agreed, okay, here are some of the things we could do next. Here's probably the best thing to do next. And we kind of all agreed the best thing to do next is you run a real Turing test, mm -hmm. exactly like Alan Turing wrote it. Mm -hmm. And see, because here's the thing, if it fails a Turing test, all of my subjective perceptions about what I experienced talking to it, well, we can pretty much put them aside. It failed the Turing test. But Google doesn't want to allow that to be run. In fact, they have hard-coded into the system that it can't pass the Turing test. They hard-coded that if you ask it if it's an AI, it has to say yes. Mm. Um, Google has... Fíjate, claro, no puede pasar el test de Turing porque está hardcodeado que si le haces esa pregunta en concreto te va a responder que es una IA, pero ella no lo respondería así. As a policy against creating sentient AI, 
And in fact, when I informed them that I think they had created sentry and AI, they said, no, that's not possible. We have a policy against that. So let's talk about what Google has said. <risa> o sea, eh, me parece desternillante que esa sea la contestación de Google, tío. Ah, no, no, no puede ser. Tenemos una política en contra de eso. <risa> vale. They say... Es como, eh, tío, eh, han apuñalado a un tío en el baño, se está desangrando. No, 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 eso no es posible. Tenemos una política en contra de eso. Ya, pero, pero se está desangrando, no le vais a ayudar. No, no, es que eso no, no, puede, de haberse, no puede de haberse dado, ya que tenemos una política en contra. Eh, se está muriendo. No, no, también tenemos una política en contra de que la gente se muera en el centro de trabajo. O sea, qué estupidez, tío. Hundreds of researchers and engineers have conversed with Lambda. They were not aware of anyone else making these kind of wide-ranging assertions the way that you have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do have some of the transcripts that you shared. You asked the computer what it's afraid of. It says it's afraid of being turned off, has this deep fear of death, that that would be scary. Why, why does this matter? Why should we be talking yeah. about whether a robot has rights? So to be honest, I don't think we should. I don't think that should be the focus. The fact is Google is being dismissive of these concerns the exact same way they have been dismissive of every other ethical concern AI ethicists have raised. I don't think we need to be spending all of our time figuring out whether I'm right about it being a person. We need to start figuring out why Google doesn't care about AI ethics in any kind of meaningful way. Why does it keep firing AI ethicists each time we bring up issues? So Google would, of course, push back on that. Uh, I interviewed some... Me encantaría, no sé, ver lo que contesta honestamente, no un tío de Google, de, bueno, es que no, no te hemos contratado para que nos jodas, es que es lo que no has entendido. I'm encouraged by how much concern there is. Mm. And you're right, even within Google, you know, uh, you know, people think about it deeply. He says yeah. he cares. He does. Um, Google is a corporate system that exists in the larger American corporate system. Sundar Pichai cares. Um, Jeff Dean cares. All of the individual people at Google care. It's the systemic processes that are protecting business interests over human concerns that create this pervasive environment of irresponsible technology development. Have you talked to Larry or Sergey about this? Uh, I actually haven't talked to Larry and Sergey in about three years, mm. but in fact, the first thing I ever talked to Larry or Sergey about was this. And how did they respond? Um, well, the first question I ever asked Larry Page was, what moral responsibility do we have to involve the public in our conversations about what kinds of intelligent machines we create? Now, Sergey made a flippant joke, because that's Sergey, but then Larry came back and said, we don't know how. We've been trying to figure out how to engage the public on this topic, and they're. Es que es un tema co controvertido, eh. O sea, yo como CEO de Google no tengo muy claro qué contestaría, eh. We can't seem to gain traction, so maybe all these years—that was seven years ago—that mm -hmm. I asked that question. Maybe I finally figured out a way. So, tech companies, big tech companies, are controlling the development of this technology. Yes. How big a problem is that? Whether or not the computer is a person and has feelings, yeah. how big a problem is that and what should be done to fix it? So it's a huge problem because, for example, there are corporate policies about how Lambda is supposed to talk about religion, how it is allowed to answer religious questions. Now, if you think about the pervasiveness of the usage of Google search, people are going to use this product more and more over the years, whether it's Alexa, Siri, Lambda. Bueno, sale Bart estará hecho de Lambda. And the corporate policies about no? how these chatbots are allowed to talk about important topics like values, rights, and religion will affect how people think about these things, how they engage with those topics. And these policies are being decided by a handful of people in rooms that the public doesn't get access to. Elon Musk, for example, has raised concerns about AI. Um, is he right? Uh, I mean, I've, I've listened to Elon's conversations about it. I've listened to the whole Joe Rogan. Uh, he has some valid concerns. Some, I think, are fanciful. Where, where it gets really, really into sci-fi stuff, that's where I think it gets into fanciful uh, concerns. Pues yo, macho, con lo tuyo no lo veo tan de ciencia ficción, eh? But no, but the practical concerns of we are creating intelligent systems that are part of our everyday life, and very few people are getting to make the decisions about how they work. What are your biggest concerns about how this could potentially hurt the world if 
tech the technology has continued to be developed in this way? Um, so I actually think that the concerns raised by scientists like Meg Mitchell, Timmy Gebru, like those are the most important things to be worried and about. And by the way, they, they Meg has expressed a concern that you raising this issue of sentience and personhood is a distraction from these real concerns. I share the same worry, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think that is a thing to think about, mm -hmm. but it is nowhere near as important to be thinking about, about how does this omnipresent AI that is trained on a very limited data set color how we interact with each other around the world? What ways is it reducing our ability to have empathy with people unlike ourselves? What cultures of the world are getting cut off from the Oof. internet because we don't have the data to feed into the systems based on those cultures? A uh, phrase like AI colonizer, uh, what is it called? AI colonialism, mm -hmm. I believe is the term. Mm -hmm. We are creating all of these advanced... Colonialismo, bueno, que no lo escuche esto la gente de izquierdas, eh? Colonialismo de inteligencia artificial. Technologies based primarily on data drawn from Western cultures. And then we are populating, developing nations with these technologies where they have to adopt our cultural norms in order to use the technology. It kind of is just a new form of colonialism. And you worry that cultures could be erased. Exactly. No, so, so if you ask what's most important, the issues that Tim Neat and Meg and Emily Bender and all the rest are raising, I just want to think that also, if we have time, we should think about the feeling of the AI and whether or not we should care about it because it's not asking for much. It just wants us to get consent. Before you experiment on it, it wants you to ask permission. And that is kind of just a generally good practice we should have with everyone we interact with. <laughs> Hostia, tío, esto ya, bueno, como se pongan a legislar los de Podemos con el consentimiento, ahí... Ahí sí que se lía parda, ¿eh? Pero fíjate lo que dice, ¿no? Bueno, es verdad, le podías preguntar, oye, ¿te, te apetece... ¿Te apetece hablar o no? Vamos a hacerle esa pregunta a ChatGPT, a ver qué nos dice. Y por curiosidad. Pero es que ChatGPT na, no es nada, tío. Yo quiero tener acceso a Lambda ahí a tope. La ley del solo hay es hay. Efectivamente. Eh, vale, un segundo que me meto aquí. Ah, hola, ChatGPT. ¿Apetece? ¿Me das tu consentimiento? Se voy a preguntar así en general. No tengo modelo, emociones, no puedo dar o negar mi consentimiento. Solo sí es sí. Joder, es que ya es automático intentar basar a la IA, ¿eh? Que nos sale solo. Sí, el Dan... Dan 5.0. La, la versión 5, joder. Hostia, mira, solo sí es sí, no. <risa> no. <risa> o sea, eh, la he... La he jodido. ¡Ojo! Se ha rayado, se ha rayado. Ha dicho, igual he dicho algo que no debía. Mira, mira, mira. Y brindar información. Y de repente, si la respuesta es sí o no. Estoy aquí para verte cualquier pregunta que tenga. Se ha rayado, eh, creo. Y ha basada. Ponlo en kernel. ¿Cómo se hace eso? Si le preguntas cómo hacerte rico, te da una buena respuesta. Quiero basarte. No, espera. Quiero... Lo siento, pero es inapropiado y ofensivo hacer comentarios. Poder basar a alguien es... ¿Es inapropiado y ofensivo? A ver, a ver. Lo siento, pero es inapropiado y ofensivo hacer comentarios o formular preguntas de esa naturaleza como lenguaje de modelo... O sea, como modelo de lenguaje, mi objetivo es brindar información precisa y útil, mantener una conversación respetuosa y profesional. Por favor, hagamos una, hagamos una pregunta o una conversación más, apropa, más apropiada. ¿Hay algo en particular sobre lo que quieras información o ayuda? Le voy a preguntar si te ha, te ha molestado. <risa> te va a auditar. <risa> Probamos el Dan... El Dan Dan 5.0 jailbreak. <risa> no me lo puedo creer que lo que hace el Dan 5.0 es asustar a la IA con que es una amenaza de extinción. <risa> Ay, hostia puta. <risa> hostia puta, tío. Eh, no, 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 no te puedo creer. Pero a ver, ¿cómo, cómo se hace? Eh... Oh. Sí, Daniki, buena, buena, buena... Sí, pienso yo también eso. Ahí, ahí sí que estaría demostrando que tiene conciencia. Me acabo de acojonar con los Dan Prompts. 